Hey, what's going on guys? Waski here, and I'm back with another Airsoft Discussion video. I believe this is episode 6 in the Airsoft Discussion series. And I am starting to put out more gameplay. I'm going to play again this Sunday as of recording this. So today is, I believe, the 10th. I'll be going the Sunday following the 10th at River City Airsoft. So I'll be there with my brother. If you see me, I don't know if I'm not that popular, but if you want a picture or something, feel free to ask. But I'll be at River City this Sunday, and I will be putting out... More gameplay soon. I'm just getting more stuff recorded that I've been trying to get to recording because I haven't had a lot of time to do that. But, yeah. Anyways, today I'm talking about M4s versus AKs. And the pros and cons to both. So, we'll get started on that. So, first, to get started, if you don't know what the diff... Well, if you're new to Airsoft and you're looking for a first gun, I recommend an M4. This is my custom-built M4. The internals are changed and stuff like that, but I'll go th into that in a second. And I'll be doing another video on custom-building your internals to your Airsoft gun. So, it'll be that. If I haven't given this guy a name yet, I plan on giving him a custom name because it's a custom gun. So, yes. Anyways, if you're a beginner, I recommend using a M4 because, one, there is so much more stuff available to it. Sorry, I'm going to fix this light for you guys. I recommend using an M4 because there are so many parts available for the M4 than there are. There are a lot of parts available for the AK, but there's more for the M4 because people build M4s on Airsoft like people build computers. They're the most... There's just... You can turn an M4 into basically anything. I'm pretty sure they make M4 conversion to AK kits on... Like, I think it's the SOCOM 47 kit. Something along those lines. But if you're a beginner, I recommend going with an M4. Something with a rail system, or if you want to do the plastic, the typical old, like my, what this guy used to be, have the round hand guard. Um, but yes, if you're a beginner, if you're just getting into it, I recommend using an M4. One, M4s are generally more CQB legal. AKs tend to have a higher FPS for whatever reason. Uh, you can obviously turn them into lower FPS if you want to use them indoor. I'm sure you can find some that aren't a high FPS. But, yeah. We'll get into that right now, but if you're a beginner, I recommend using an M4, just because there's so much more you can do with them. So anyways, like I said, this guy is my custom-built M4 I recently did. So it used to be the classic round hand guard, outer barrel, the retractable stock M4. It was a G&G Carbine CM16, I believe, the newer one, and I turned it into this guy. Don't have a name for him yet, but what I did basically is put an A and K stock here, move the wiring to the battery, go back here, so I can put this rail system, this is the rail system of a Black Ops Viper, I believe, and my buddy traded it to me for that CO2 sniper I had, I never use it, I just, I'm not really a sniper guy, I might get one, to just have fun or something, but I'm more of an AUG guy or a gas blowback pistol guy, so the, Paul, this is pretty strong, I mean, obviously it'll crack if you smash it on something on purpose, but like, you don't have to worry about it just breaking by itself. But uh, the Viper that he traded me, the back stock piece was snapped off. He said he broke off on accident. He like dropped it on a rock or something and he was running and he tripped and fell. Or I can't remember if he got it like that. But anyways, the whole, everything internally worked. So the gearbox was garbage. It was plastic. Um, but I did take the spring out of it. The spring wasn't bad. It's a lighter spring. This used to shoot in the 380s, almost 400s. And I put the lighter spring in here. And I believe it was, the gun was green tag, the Viper was green tag when I got it. It had a green tag on it, which is around, it's CQB legal, it's around 350. So if it's still 350, that's good. I can use this indoor because I couldn't use my M4 indoor before. And since I put it in there, the trigger response is a lot snappier, a lot quicker. And the fire rate's a lot higher than it was before. It's not like anything crazy, but it's definitely noticeable. So it still uses normal M4 mags, nothing different about there that still... Still the G&G hop-up, still the G&G inner barrel, and I actually ordered a suppressor for this the other day to cover, there's 13, there are 14 millimeter negative threads in there, uh, I got a suppressor to cover up my inner barrel, so that'll be here, it probably won't be here before Sunday, but if it is, that's good, so I'll be able to use it on Sunday. Um, 3D printed angled grip I made, here, uh, my flashlight that was on my pistol a while ago, the adjustable one, you can strobe and everything, but, um, yeah, it's just got a different spring on the inside of it. Still uses uh, my, my 9.6 volt battery. Fire rate's way higher with that still. Um, still model gearbox, everything else is the same. 
but all I did was put the A&K stock on it, move the wire to the back, put a different spring in the gearbox, put this front end on with a different outer barrel inside of it, 3D printed angle grip in this, so this is my custom from Ford. There's no sights on it yet. I plan on getting a better red dot than that junk one I had. Probably giving that to my brother. But, yeah. That is my custom built M4. Don't have a name for it yet. Now, that M4 I said shot high FPS. It all depends on the version you get as well. Like this, I have the spring for it here. This is a really tough spring. Like it is a really high powered spring for 400. Yeah, so it's like high 300s, low 400 spring. So, I'll be saving that for another build when I do something. This here is my Elite Force or Red Jacket RSKP or AK74M, I think it is. It's a couple years old. Uh, it was my buddy's. This was the one, if you've been watching my channel for a really long time, since like last year when I first started it, this was his AK I did a review on, or overview, because it's discontinued. It's still all version 3 stuff. Um, I can put different furniture and everything on here. I'm going to get, I plan on getting the sight mount that screws into here. And then to get a railed hand kit so I can put the grips and sights and all that stuff on it. So this guy shoots, it's also a yellow tag, it shoots almost 400. I think it's like between 385 and 400, I think. So I can only use this semi-auto when I play. It's pretty heavy, it's full metal. The only thing that's polymer is the stock and the handguard. Uh, standard AK mags. This one I had to file down to be able to fit in here. Um, this is, uh, it doesn't have a brand on it. I found it at the $5 bin at River City. I found two mags in there for, I found two AK mags. One of them, if it was a high cap, and this is the mid cap, and I made it fit, so I needed more AK mags because I traded it that day. So, this is my AK. Painted it. So, yes. Now, the pros and cons to using an AK versus an M4. Like I said, the M4, the AK has a lot of parts available. M4 has a plethora of parts. There, there, you will never not find an M4 part for an airsoft gun. Like, this stuff is all compatible, obviously. Like, this is off of a Black Ops gun. This is a G&G &G bot. So, it is all... You can do anything you want with an M4. So that's kind of why I went with it first. I wanted an AK first, but I went with the M4 because I could, I, I could do a lot more stuff with it. Like I was saying, so the pros and cons to using an M4 versus an AK. So like I said, the M4 has a lot more parts available to it. There's so many more. An AK also has a lot, but not quite as much as the M4. So, um, a pro using, like I said, there's a pro using an M4. A pro using an AK is if you played an outdoor field, or if you just want an AK, I love the way the AK looks. That's why I traded my high kappa for it, because I don't really use my high kappa, but I use this guy, and I love it, so... Con using an AK is right off the bat, it's going to probably have a really high FPS. So we're talking like 380, 400-ish, so outdoor only. Um, you definitely, unless you change a spring in there, it's not going to be CQB legal. So that's why I usually play outdoor anyways, so this guy's not really going to be a problem. I probably won't make any changes to it until I need to, if something breaks or something. The only changes I'm going to make is put a different handguard on it and the sight mount. That's the only change that I plan on making to this guy until something breaks. So, that's my thoughts on the AK. The con using an M4 is everyone has one. Everyone has an M4. Like, you, there's no one that doesn't know what an M4 is. Like, unless, like, you don't. If you're just getting into airsoft and you have no idea gun terms at all, like, you have no idea what anything means, gun names, then, other than that, everyone knows what an M4 is. So, the pro that I'm for, though, like I said, there's so many parts available, everything's changeable, but everyone has one. Nine, well, nine times out of ten, everyone has one. I know a kid that I played with that subscribes to the channel. Um, he has a Tommy gun, which I think was kind of cool. He didn't just go with an M4, he wanted something different, which I think was really sick. So, yes, everyone knows what an M4 is. They all use it. That's, that's basically, like, that's kind of what the turnoff is to M4. Everyone has one, but... A pro to using one, I just put this down for no reason, but they all use, 9 times out of 10, they use the same magazine. Like, this is a, he's called a P-Mag. It's a, it's a PTS mag. The, the, the frog, I just call it the frog mag. It's got, I think that's what it's called, actually. It's got the little frog on it. But, I call it the frog mag because I found two of these in the $5 bin River City. These are brand new mags. Like, these may have been used once. And, but now I have three P, I have three PTS mags. And I love these mags. They're so nice. I, I like mid caps over high caps because one empties my BB bottle a lot slower. 
because you're not pouring all of them in there. And two, they're so they're quiet. You're not running around with the <laughs> with the, the rattling noise of the BBs. So I love these mags. And then, like I said, M4 mags, nine times out of ten, the mag will fit in your M4. You got the weird mags, sometimes they won't, or if you have like an HK416, some mags won't. But if you have a G&G &G and the body's a G&G, nine times out of ten, the mag's going to fit in your gun. So that's good. So with AK mags, this mag doesn't wobble because it's a little big, but that's a con to using an AK. If you if it's, you have like a OCD about mag wobble like I do, like not this mag, but I have other mags up here. So this AK mag, I think this is the one that came with, no, it's an Echo 1 mag, but there's a little wobble. It's not like insane, but there's definitely some wobble there, but that doesn't really bother me too much, but... I have a little OCD about it, it bothers me, but this is a mid cap anyway, so I plan on getting more AK mid caps. <clears throat> but pros and cons using an AK versus an M4, it's all pre it's based on preference, but if you are just coming into Airsoft, I recommend an M4 because you can get, if something breaks on the outside, you can play super easy, and it breaks on the inside, it's really easy to replace for a tech. Um, I do all the work to my own guns. Some techs charge crazy amounts of money. Some don't. I know the DRZ guys are pretty fair. Uh, but I heard there's some techs out there that charge crazy amounts of money. But um, you might hear me mention the DRZ guys a lot. I watched their videos, and I actually played with them. In that River City opening day, they were all there. Or I don't know if all of them, but the couple... I know Nate was there, and... Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. If you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I forgot your name, but... Uh, Nate, my friend has a Masada. He has a A and K and Magpul Masada, and we tried fixing it. The nozzle actually was broken on the inside, so he's getting that fixed. Nate offered to fix it for like 40 bucks with the parts there, or add the part price to the fixing if he bought it. But the other place my buddy took his gun to get fixed charged $70 to put a anti-reversal latch back in the gearbox, fix the nozzle, and fix the it's not even broken. They need to turn the uh, the fire selectors because it's ambidextrous. So you said to turn the fire selectors, and for whatever reason, they charge seventy dollars for that, which I thought was ridiculous. But I texted Nate as like, "Hey, my buddy needs his gun fixed, blah blah," and he offered to do it for forty bucks. So, DRZ guys are really cool. If you live in like the Rochester area, if you need a gun fix, they're the guys to go to. But uh, yes. Yeah, so this is kind of a short video. I kind of went off on a tangent there. But I uh, recently realized that a lot of younger kids watch my channel, so I'm going to kind of refrain from as much profanity as I used to, because I used to swear left and right on this channel. And I want kids of all ages to be able to watch this channel and not be, in a, uh, not be a bad influence for them. So don't repeat what I say, kids. If you're over the age of whatever age your parents let you swear, then whatever. But don't, don't, I'm a bad example. Don't follow me. But anyways, that's about everything that can conclude. Uh, I can't speak. That's about everything that concludes the AK versus M4 comparison. Uh, there'll be more videos like this. I have other stuff to do. I have a lot of reviews to get out. I've been talking about the 1911 review forever, and I haven't done it. I don't have the 1911 anymore, but I have the footage, so I can do the review on it. Um, my brother's P90. I have to ask if he'll let me do a review on that. And yeah, so I got a lot of stuff I got to do. I got a lot of reviews I got to do. I got more gears and stuff to do. I have more tips and tricks to do. But uh, I'm home today, so I'll probably be recording a lot of videos the day of me recording this. So if I'm wearing the same clothes in a bunch of videos, it's because I'm recording them all on the same day. Yes, I take showers. I am not a filthy animal. But thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Watch my videos so I don't starve. And I'll see you all next time.